Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're listing 10 of the best of world football's onesies and wonders. 10. Francis Jeffers If there's one phrase associated with Franny Jeffers, it's fox in the box. If there's another, it's mile of shite. Jeffers burst onto the scene with Everton as a teenager and managed a goal every other game despite constant injuries, prompting the Toffees to offer him a record contract. But Jeffers made an £8 million switch to Arsenal, where he looked unfit and unable to break into the starting eleven. Jeffers warmed the bench and the physios table for three years before embarking on a journeyman career through Australia and Malta. He never reached double figures in a league campaign and managed just one England cap. 9. Stuart Downing Middlesbrough trainee Stuart Downing impressed as a youngster with his pace and creative ability, but he didn't put together a season of consistent excellence until he moved to Villa in 2009. In his second campaign in the Midlands, he netted eight goals, including a winner against Liverpool, enticing the Reds to pay £20 million for his services. Downing didn't manage a single goal or assist in his first season at Anfield, and was moved on to West Ham after two years. And though he showed flashes of ability with the Hammers and eventually back at Middlesbrough, the potential was never fully realised. 8. Michael Dawson Once considered the future of England and Tottenham, centre-back Michael Dawson joined Spurs for £8 million from Nottingham Forest after the club was relegated to the third tier in 2005. But in nine years in North London, Dawson only enjoyed one standout campaign, receiving the Tottenham Player of the Year award in 2009-10 as the club qualified for the Champions League. Unfortunately, Dawson struggled with world-class competition from Sebastian Bassong, eventually leaving for Hull, where he continued to be terrible and one of the slowest professional players around. 7. Adele Tarabd Adele Tarabd was always seen as an exceptional talent, but has also been a massive prick at every club which has been foolish enough to sign him. Spurs offloaded him to QPR for just £1 million in 2010, and the deal looked like a bargain as the Moroccan netted 19 times in the league and was named Championship Player of the Year. But Tarabd's ego grew quicker than his gut as he lost fitness and angled for a move away, somehow conjuring up a loan spell at Milan before a permanent move to Benfica, where he was dumped in the reserves. 6. Stephen Ireland if you only manage six caps for Ireland, you probably aren't all that great. An appropriately named Irish midfielder Stephen Ireland flopped after just one great year in 2008-2009. The then 22-year-old was voted Man City Player of the Season thanks to his dynamic attacking play and 13 strikes in all competitions. But the arrival of Roberto Mancini saw Ireland benched for veteran Patrick Vieira, and he looked more and more out of place as City ramped up their spending to Galactico levels. Having failed to establish himself at Villa and Stoke since, Ireland's tumble down the shit heap of English football is complete. 5. Papi Cisse In January 2012, Newcastle picked up Papi Cisse to partner countryman Demba Barr in attack. And for five months, everything Cisse hit went in, with the Senegalese netting 13 in 14 Premier League games, including a stunning brace against Chelsea to propel the Magpies to a fifth-place finish but he proved unable to maintain his absurd strike rate, managing just eight in a full season the next year. And though he did struggle into double figures in 2014-2015, he has never again looked like the goal machine that fans dubbed the heir to Shearer in 2012. 4. Chiro Immobile Chiro Immobile has actually had two good seasons, but the first was in Serie B, when the Italians scored 28 goals for Pescara with service from Lorenzo Insigne and Marco Verratti and his top-flight career peaked in 2014, when a 22-goal haul with Torino earned him the Capo Cannonieri and a move to Borussia Dortmund. But Immobile failed to fill the boots of the departing Robert Lewandowski, scoring three league goals and a loan to Sevilla could not spark a revival. He since returned to Turin, and this time, perhaps he should stay there. 3. Daniel Guitha Daniel Guitha was a hot prospect in Spain as a youngster, and after scoring regularly in the Segunda División, he gained a move to top-flight Getafe and then to Mallorca. In his one season in Palma, he scored a staggering 27 goals and finished as La Liga's top scorer over Sergio Aguero, Raúl and Samuel Eto. Fenerbahce took Guitha to Turkey for 14 million euros, but the Spaniard could not replicate his stellar form at Mallorca, managing only 23 goals in three years with Fener. 
Now in the Spanish third tier with Cadiz, a club he once claimed to hate, Guita's career continues to get weirder. 2. Roque Santa Cruz Roque Santa Cruz had joined Bayern Munich at 18 and spent eight years with the Germans, so it was a little surprising when he joined Blackburn Rovers for £3.5 million in 2007. And Paraguay's all-time top scorer looked like a world-beater when he racked up 19 goals in his first season and was named Blackburn's Player of the Year. A year later, Man City paid £17.5 million for his services, but they were rewarded with four goals over two seasons. And in the seven years after leaving Blackburn, Santa Cruz has notched a miserable 33 league goals. 1. Michu Spanish striker Michu took off like a rocket after arriving at Swansea from Rayo Vallecano, and his 18 goals and £2 million price tag inspired envy in the rest of the Premier League and a new contract after just six months. With Arsenal and Liverpool sniffing around, the Swans stubbornly fended off interest in their asset with a £25 million valuation. But Michu's stock plummeted when a dismal 2013-2014 brought just two goals and he was shipped out to Napoli on loan where he faulted again. In 2015, Swansea finally cut him loose and the Spaniard signed with amateur side Langreo back in his homeland. So that was our biggest one season wonders, but who would you have selected? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out Wednesdays on the best returning heroes featuring Paul Scholes and Thierry Henry. And as always guys, please do like and subscribe.